The organ is telling the glory of God. Good morning, everyone. The earth is telling the glory of God, and you, by your presence, are telling the glory of God. Thank you for joining with us today on this first Sunday of Lent. I'm Pastor Rachel. Our liturgist today is Becky, and we are delighted to share in this first Sunday of Lent with you. Um, those of you who are joining us online, thank you. We're glad that you're here. If you'll put your name in the chat, if it's not already on your screen, that helps us know who's here. Uh, and it can also help you connect with the other folks who are there. And those of you uh, in the analog version of church, um, look for the blue folder in your uh, pew and give it a, a s signature in there. Let us know that you are here and if there is anything that you are in need of. No matter which way you are joining us, your presence matters here, and we're so glad that you're here. Uh, we have a few announcements before the opening prayer. I want to invite um, Paula Campbell and Melissa Galladay forward. Uh, we have some big things coming next week. Um, Paula is the co-chair with Linda Galladay um, on the New Hope Committee, which is, uh, she'll tell you more about what they're doing. And uh, Melissa Galladay is the vice president of our church council. Good morning, everyone. There is one key question that we were asked to answer when we wrote the last church profile in 2019. That question was, who is God calling this church to become? We're still trying to answer that question today, but now with more urgency, what is our why? What is our God-led purpose here at IUCC? How can we not just survive, but thrive given our current financial status? The charge of the New Hope Committee formed as a result of the last congregational meeting in November, was to find some solutions. The committee has been hard at work and now we're ready to provide an update. The purpose of the meeting that we will have next week will be to hear the New Hope Committee's recommendation on hiring a consultant to work with the entire congregation in determining the best path forward for Emmanuel. We will also ask you to vote to approve the budget for this work. Now I'm going to let Melissa talk about the congregational meeting. So we're having a meeting after church next Sunday to discuss um, the options that the New Hope Committee has and also to vote on a new council member. So if there's anybody, this is your last chance. I'll come hound you after church. If you'd like to be a council member, let me know. Thank you. Thank you both. They represent a huge amount of work by many people in this congregation. And as a, your pastor, it is so heartening to see the, the passion that is going into um, plotting our way forward in the future. Um, <clears throat> astute observers in uh, this sanctuary will notice a new piece of artwork uh, on the window over here. It is a cardboard and duct tape installation um, covering uh, the work of an anonymous artist who tossed a very full energy drink through our window sometime this week. Um, and so we are working on replacing that um, and uh, just wanted to let you know that that's what happened. We don't know any more details than that about the how or the why. Um, but uh, we appreciate the artwork, particularly of Alan Ernie. So thank you. Um, also next week, uh, it, we hope that you will just plan to spend your entire morning with us next week because starting at 9 a.m. we are going to bribe you with donuts um, and we're going to have a donut Sunday that is sponsored by our open and affirming committee. 
Uh, and they are going to be doing a presentation and time for discussion specifically about the terminology used uh, in the LGBTQ plus community. And if you have no idea what any of those letters mean, this next Sunday is for you. <laughs> um, even if you don't know what one of them means, this less, next Sunday is for you. Um, and if you have questions, we, we are hoping to be a completely open and safe place to ask questions so that we can all learn together. Um, all of us are still learning. And there are donuts. Did I mention the donuts? This is the first Sunday of Lent and a tradition we had before the pandemic and are now bringing back is that it is a day for our congregation to sign a congregational pledge of nonviolence. Um, that is currently in our uh, narthex, which is the fancy word for lobby back there. Um, and I hope that you will read it and if you choose, sign it. Um, this is a commitment that we have made and continue to make. Uh, and we uh, would invite those who are on Zoom, if you want us to put your name on there for you, uh, we will do it. So just mention that in the chat. Um, we also want to make sure that uh, you noted in our recorder um, that the council, as part of this Pledge of Nonviolence, has voted to uh, officially ban guns within our church building. Um, it's not been an issue, <laughs> but um, we just want to make sure that that is, uh, that is clear because this is something that we are uh, pledging to and working toward. Um, you will find out in the narthex, if you don't have one already, this little flyer that's uh, lent at a glance that will give you some of the dates and times of our uh, fellowship things and also your bulletin announcements will do the same. And finally, I want to let you know that we we have had a difficult loss in our congregation and we will be doing what has become our tradition, which is a memorial tribute um, to uh, Larry Lacer, who passed away uh, last week. And um, so that will be happening during the service too. Friends, we come to this Lenten season in many ways. Some are delighted by the jonquils blooming outside. Some are torn by grief. Some are eager to get on with March Madness. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So let's take a deep breath. You might need to stretch. Lent is a time of reflection. It's a time to assess where we are searching for meaning and purpose, just as we are doing as a congregation. We are searching in the same way as someone trying to look for a winning word from Scrabble tiles will search with excitement or frustration, creativity, and focus. And the question for us this year is where do we look for love that doesn't go away? Love that lasts and we will be seeking answers from our scriptures because Jesus teaches us a different way, a way that is not driven by immediate satisfaction or power or security, but a way that welcomes and enfolds and empowers a way of love. For this season, we will have a gathering song called Show Us How to Love, and it's a bit complex, so our choir is going to lead us in singing it.
up front with us or with me or anybody who likes Scrabble. I'll get my Scrabble board out. You like Scrabble? Well, good, because I stole your board. I borrowed. If she has the cool board that spins when you have the base of it, it also means I can do this, unlike other Scrabble boards, that all the letters would fall off of me on. So who's ever played Scrabble before? So you've not played Scrabble. You don't know all your words and letters yet. <laughs> That's okay. It's a hard, okay. You have played with it. You like these little tiles, don't you? They're fun, right? And it's a good way to learn your letters also. That's a good way to learn them. And they're pretty cool. So you know how you have to make up other words, but usually you're, you're given a bunch of letters, right? And they're all mixed up. And you have to figure out, do the letters that I have spell anything? And sometimes the answer is no. Um, and sometimes the answer is they do not spell a word that I know. Whoop. Oopsie. Oopsie. No, I didn't fill all of them in because we're just starting. So this one, I'm going to have Etta read it because you're still learning. What does that say? This one would go this way, this way, and that way. Mm hmm. Looking and four. So we're looking for love. And it's going to happen all during the next six weeks, which is called Lent. And as someone told me, it's. You found love? Oh, mommy. Yeah, that's a good one, mommy and daddy. That's a good, that's a good place to find love, right? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do this whole time. And ooh, during this time of Lent, which is not the Lent that's on your pants, like someone thought, but sounds the same. So points for her on that part. But it's our journey to Easter. And the whole time, we're going to hear stories about Jesus. And there are going to be some crazy stories. Um, and then some that you can really see where love is. So we're, our job this whole time is to look to where we, feel, we see or feel love. So you feel it in mommy and daddy. Who do you feel or where do you see love? <gasps> Grandma and grandpa. That's a good one. You found love? You found Nana? Yeah, that's love too, right? Yeah, and I hope that you can find love all out here. And sometimes we see people that we may not even know, but they're Hello. doing something. Oh, thank you. And they might be doing something where we're like, oh, that's love. Like when people help each other. Yeah. And sometimes we just need love to make it through the day, right? So all Lint, we're going to have a we're gonna have little easy prayer to say after. And you all can say it too. It's real short because that's how I like prayers because it's short, sweet, to the point. So ready? God is love. Love is God. Amen. Amen. That's pretty easy, right? I like that version. So that's going to be our prayer all the whole time, okay? And we're going to leave our Scrabble board up here, but it's going to get new words on it. It might build. It might not because it depends on what the words are. And if I already have the letters on the like. <laughs> it might be magic. Yeah, it'll just appear every week. But we're going to leave it up here on the altar for us, okay? And remind us to look for love. Okay, let's go get our bags. And you are, why don't you get, I'll get extra time. You may notice we have changed our order just a little bit uh, this week, so uh, we're going to invite us into our opening hymn now, which is a little bit more just like a regular hymn and not necessarily opening. But either way, you're invited to rise in body and spirit and join us.
Amen. Please be seated. This is where we're putting in the confession. Maybe. This week, uh, we are hearing about how Jesus resists evil in the desert. We are seeing the futility of looking for love in empty highs, in the tempting of fate, or in mindless adoration. And rather, as Jesus demonstrates, it is in our resistance to evil that we find true communion with God. And so we join together confessing to God as a group, because we're all part of it. But before we even utter a word, we can be assured that God will offer us grace and a way forward. And that is how we are free to be honest with what pains us most about our own thoughts and actions. And so in that spirit, I invite you to pray with me. Holy and merciful one, we come bringing our deepest longings, our failed attempts at satisfying them. We have often looked for love, acceptance, and security in the trappings of notoriety, popularity, and power that diminish others in order to gain for ourselves. At times we fail to see that you have already given us what really matters, your love and acceptance. You provide opportunities all around us to make a difference in the lives of others. You give us a fresh start every day, inviting us to do better. In this silence, we bring to you our pleas for openness to a different way of living. My friends, be assured by the words written in 1 John, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Already the ways of love created by God, embodied in Jesus and sustained by the Spirit are moving within us. We are forgiven, loved, and freed. Thanks be to God. Amen. We rejoice in that freedom by passing the peace of Christ, which we will do in our pews. Uh, but your uh, response is uh, in the bulletin. Yes. The peace of Christ be with you. We move now to that time uh, that is our tradition of honoring um, someone who has moved from the uh, place in our pews to a place seated among God's beloved in whatever way that happens. <laughs> um, we are remembering a pillar of the church, uh, Larry Lacer today. Larry Emmett Lacer was age 78 and a presence at Emmanuel from his first few weeks of life. He was baptized here to the day he was able to do, last day he was able to do anything of his own volition. And he came to church that day, has passed from our physical presence into the communion of saints. He was a fixture in this place. And more than that, he was a friend to many. If you met Larry once, you probably got that lovely sense that he already liked and accepted you, and that's because he did. An optimistic person by birth, he had known by a young age his fair share of the difficulties of life. He had many heart issues and surgeries, and he was always under a doctor's watchful eye. And that experience seemed to do for him what the very best thing it could. It helped him cherish every moment of life. He grew with abundance and beauty and joy and appreciated every moment of it. He worked hard in several companies, primarily as an accountant and in business roles, but he completed his career in the schools, giving back to his community. And when he was not working, he had fun camping, traveling, cheering on U of L and many other sports teams. And if he wasn't already busy playing third base or volleyball or bowling or dartball for Emmanuel's trophy winning teams, 
or golfing with his buddies. He loved sports, but even more, he loved spending time with people, especially enjoying the people of this place. He didn't talk a lot about his faith, but you could watch him live it out. The way he welcomed folks without a hint of judgment or pitched in any time there was work that needed doing, he was constantly ready to serve. He leaves a large hole in our church family. And while he lived a good long life, we wish it could have been longer. But he did spend his last conscious, fully conscious steps at a Super Bowl party. And we have to believe that there is some joy in that for him. And he was surrounded by friends before he had his heart attack and then several strokes. He rests or more likely plays with his beloved parents and the friends who've gone before him. We who remain can continue his work of cultivating the joy of life, knowing that abiding in joy is abiding in the holy. It is abiding in God. So Larry, we will really miss you, but we hope that your joy is already more abundant in the eternal life with God. Well done, good and faithful servant. We are better for having you in our lives. We'll sing Hymn of Promise, verses one and three, and the number in your uh, bulletin is incorrect and it should be six, six, seven, eight. But it will also be on the screens. leaves behind some beloved family and I forgot to mention that but Leanne and Sherry and Robin and so many of his chosen family here you are all in our prayers now we can hear our scripture for today Today's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. So please listen for the word of God. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, 
for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. You add so much beauty to our service and your anthem is very meaningful. Friends, would you pray with me? God, on this beautiful day that you have made, illuminate our hearts and minds to the value of following in your light and your love. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So you've probably caught on. Our Lenten theme is these Scrabble tiles. And it is kind of a weird one, I admit. And it, but it's not just because we love playing games, although I do think of this as sort of an homage to my grandfather. But there's something about life that is like one of these jumbled bags of letters, right? We get to find the words in them that make meaning out of just whatever we're given. Ooh, I got the word ooh. And we also have to work with the board that we are given where other people have already played their hands and we are left to make our decisions in relationship with them. This theme gives us a permission to have a little bit of fun in the midst of a somber time. And you'll see that today's theme on your cover is resist evil uh, because we are being reminded of Jesus's temptation or testing in the desert where he must resist the very convincing pleas of the devil, using his own human needs and his own holy scripture against him. Jesus must resist evil. So just for fun, I thought I would see what happens if you don't choose resist evil from the Scrabble board, and you mix it up and you choose other letters. And so I went for an anagram of resist evil, which is just the fancy word for what else can you find when you mix up all of these letters. And I found that if you choose not to resist evil, you might find a svelte iris, which is, you know, kind of a lovely image, really. <laughs> and the beauty of nature uh, is certainly uh, of God. But you know, I guess it could be distracting. You might find visit reels. Now, those of you who are on social media may know that this is in fact a temptation that can suck all of your time away because the reels are the little videos that just keep playing over and over. My favorite was Elvis tries. And I thought maybe this is where the religious outcry came from with Elvis's uh, dancing. You know, maybe they realized he wasn't resisting evil in that way. And the last one is silveriest. And there we go. There are quite a number of us who would choose the silveriest rather than the resistance of evil, even if we don't always want to admit it. It's something that comes for all of us as a temptation. That word evil is kind of a scary word to think about and to use. It's pretty powerful, but it's translated as the same thing as sin in the Bible, and so maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> the basic idea of it is choosing power for oneself at the detriment of others, ignoring those in need, or taking things or land or people from the ones to whom they belong. There's particularly lots of evil available to leaders, to justify their own kingdom. And what happens when they choose evil is that God destroys their kingdom, according to the prophets. And, you know, we love to cite Micah, the, the verse that says, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? Well, evil is the opposite of that. So it's to allow or to participate in injustice, to choose harshness or violence, to put other things before God. Throughout the Hebrew Bible, these are the things that will get you, and they are still very present with us today. There is injustice everywhere in labor, in land use, in environmental burdens, in purchasing choices, in policymaking, 
in who we give our time and attention to. And often it is our very natural desire for security that can get us into trouble in this way, that food and security and power, they're all things that can be helpful, but that we can also hoard to excess. And sometimes we use these earthly things to meet a spiritual or sometimes emotional deficit within us. And the temptation for power and status and prominence can distract us from the real work that God is trying to do. There are many opportunities for violence, certainly in our addiction to guns as an answer to the societal issues of our time, but also in physical and verbal violent responses to family members or to church members or to cashiers or to telemarketers. Yeah, see, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our pledge of nonviolence, when you really read it, is quite challenging because we live in a violent world. And so to choose kindness can be a radical resistance to evil. And then there are the opportunities for idolatry. I think this is the hardest. So many good things and institutions of this world can be wonderful things. But if we choose them over God, we fall into that category of idolatry. Patriotism and nationalism is one of those. We have a great country, but when it doesn't live up to the ways of justice, kindness, and humility, we are called to choose God. Our ideals of perfection, we spent all of Lent last year talking about this one, staying busy, earning a good living to provide for your family, having a nice house, getting into the right high school or college, all good things. But if done at the expense of God or those whom God loves, they can become evil our own sense of control, that pernicious belief that we are the ones who can fix a problem or can control someone else's life choices or do all the right things in order to avoid the pain of life. All of those are idolatry to the self, and they certainly lead to disappointment, if not harm. And even putting our own families above God is technically idolatry. Although God certainly blesses the love that we have for our families and wants us to have healthy and abundant life with our families. But we are instructed from the beginning to love God first. Even the church itself, even this building and the way we always do things and our church council and its amazing leadership or the denomination that we may love or the pastor's incredibly eloquent and wise words every week. None of them are above God. These temptations existed just as much in Jesus's time as they do in ours. And that's what the devil uses to check whether his loyalty is really to God or to something more silvery. Each time his response is to acknowledge the ways in which idolatry tempts him in that scenario. And so often the good and the evil are two sides of the same coin and it's the motivation that really matters. It's the motivation that could make you take a slight turn off of a more healthy path and into the thorny brambles, perhaps, of those svelte irises. Jesus' temptations, the bread. Now, bread is not evil. In fact, a few chapters later, he's busy passing it out out of something that he creates out of nothing, right? Along with fish. But to do it for the idolatry of control and the desire for security, then it can take on a sinful tinge. That flying leap off of a cliff. Yes, God looks out for us. God promises in the Psalms to not let us stub our feet on a stone. It's that whole eagle's wing song is from that psalm. But to do something dumb just to get God to prove God's power, not so much. Trust God, but wear your seatbelt, friends. And then the final temptation, the power over all the land. This is the hardest one. Yes, Jesus already knows that he is there to usher in a new kingdom. He is a threat already to the powers that be. It might be easier or more efficient just to crown him king, be done with it. But his is a kingdom that doesn't come 
until all are really in it and choose to be in it. Taking it by force doesn't work. His is a kingdom based not on fame or riches or glory, but on lifting up the lowly and releasing the captives, and all glory belongs to God. The temptation is not that food or power or leadership are inherently wrong, but rather that they can be used for the wrong ends at the wrong time. So the sort of good news in all of this is that every one of us sins. Even Jesus had to purify and fast for 40 days in order to be able to resist the devil's calling. As it says in Psalm 130, if you kept a record of sins, who could stand? And it is so prominent that Jesus, when he taught us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer, reminded us to say every week, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because it's there all the time. We are constantly tempted to relieve our uncertainty and our suffering, all those things that are painful by turning toward things that seem easy. This time of Lent is 40 days to match Jesus's and to match many other 40 day journeys in the Bible. Long ago, it was the time of preparation for adults seeking baptism. And now we take it on as a time to be focused, a concentrated time of intentionally making space for God. In this Lenten series, we're looking for love in all the right places, we hope. It helps to know what the wrong places are. And this passage gives us a clue. The love of power, the love of security, the love of other things before God. We can't turn there for true lasting love. It will always disappoint. We have to first turn or repent toward God. We see the futility of looking for love in the things that can only provide temporary satisfaction. And sometimes Satan, who is also known as the accuser, can convince us that we are unlovable, that we are not worthy of all of this. And that too can lead to evils that befall us from within. And so we are called to resist the evil that we hear in order to find true communion with God and our neighbor. And it starts with a confession. That's why I had to put that back in the bullet. And then the good news that our groaning can turn into glad cries of deliverance as we choose good over evil time after time, even and especially if it's not the popular thing to do. The beauty of this story is Jesus's reminder that as God incarnate on earth, Jesus was still subjected to the same weaknesses, desires, temptations that affect all of humanity. His body was hungry, just like ours can get. His fears were just as gut-wrenching as others might have been. And his desire for power probably held some pull. We see Satan at work trying to do to Jesus what he succeeds in doing to so many, convincing Jesus to fill up a space meant solely for love with material things that fall short. When we don't succeed in our resistance to evil, we can remember that we worship a God who is already victorious against evil. We unburden ourselves in confession and come clean, and this gives us the wherewithal to try again. I have to wonder if there is some divine humor in our church window being broken by an energy drink. It is perhaps a pause for Lenten reflection for us. Is, is this a reminder that we don't have enough energy? Is it a reminder that our striving for busyness is keeping us from seeing the needs that are around us? Is it a critique that we may be being tempted by silvery things? Or are we a target because we are resisting evil to some extent and that makes people mad? It's hard to say, but it is up to us to ask these questions this Lenten season. Thank God we get to do it together. Amen.
Okay, it's for our offering prayer. Blessed Father, daily you reveal the glory and splendor of your kingdom. By concentrating our gifts on buying convenience and familiarity, we diminish your offer of abundant grace. Enable us through our offering to focus on your way and not on the temptations of this world. We pray humbly in your spirit. Amen. you to stay standing if that is comfortable enough for you as we do our closing prayer that leads into the lord's prayer this one will have a slightly different feel than we sometimes do it's there's a response and when i say we pray in jesus name you're invited to say lord have mercy and we will do something that is traditional in some other churches where we pray from the wideness of the world down to our very hearts and so I invite you to pray with me in that. And I also want to say I left out a prayer concern that Jennifer, um, who we've been praying for, is in the hospital with blood clots. Um, and so we are going to send lots of prayers her way. Loving Creator, we come to you asking for strength to resist injustice in the world. You have created a world in which we are a global community, connected and interdependent. Show us how to love so that when one part of the human family is affected by hate, war, hunger, or disaster, we will move to right any wrongs and alleviate suffering for the sake of all. You have created a planet full of such wonder and diversity. Show us how to love this planet home as our precious dwelling, assuring the flourishing of all living things. We pray this day for Ukraine in their war, for Syria and Turkey and Brazil and New Zealand and California in the wake of natural disasters, our beloved Kentucky with its so many needs. We pray in Jesus' name, Lord have mercy. Loving sovereign, we come to you asking for strength to make a difference in our communities. You created us for beloved community bringing what we can offer and honoring others for their contributions, you invite us to love our neighbors. Show us how to love more widely, more deeply, especially when others are hurting. We pray this day for the violence and crime that continue to rock our city, for affordable housing, for care for our seniors and our children, for our beloved Brooklawn and the children they serve and for so many around us, especially those who have no place to call home. We pray in Jesus' name, Lord have mercy. Loving parent, we come to you asking for strength to make our homes and relationships places of love. You showed us what love looks like in the companionship of Jesus who invited all to his table, touched the untouchables with healing, spoke with and drew close those shunned by others open us more completely that we can imagine so that our love may break through the most difficult situations. We pause in silence as we each lift up in our hearts the relationships that need your love. We pray in Jesus name, Lord have mercy lover of our souls we come to you asking for strength to love ourselves in the beginning you created us in your own image giving us life and breath and the ability to love and yet we find it difficult sometimes to love what you have created to believe you called us good help us know the lure of your love for us so that we may be your love in this world in our communities and in the lives with whom we intersect each day we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, have mercy. 
And so as your people following in the ways of your son, Jesus, who set the pattern of love as resistance to the temptations of fame and fortune, we pray with confidence the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, go forth into the world, looking for love in all the right places. Resist where you must, love where you can. And know that God, our creator, Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, go with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.